Connor's got a question for you. Yeah, Max, your point about kind of like chasing greatness and wanting to be remembered as, you know, one of the greatest. Joe Rogan said that that was the greatest knockout in the history of the UFC, and he's been around a long time. When you hear stuff like that, what does it mean to you? And then when do you see when you see the reactions of Adesanya and Volkanovski and all those other guys, is that kind of even a bonus to see how impressive it was for them as well to see that knockout? Because it was absurd. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's just amazing. It, it, amazing to see people react and then to see my, my, my peers react is even more crazy. You know, watching fighters geek out like fans, it's uh, it's pretty. It's a pretty cool thing to see. Yeah. Hopefully we can top it, you know. Everybody always thinks that there's one moment, but, you know, hopefully we can replicate it and, and do it better. Tom Brady might be coming back. What? what? Yeah, he was talking to Vic Blenz. Okay. Vic Blenz, he's uh, white with a sweet fade yep. mm-hmm. and a lot of really cool tattoos. And Tom Brady just sprinkled in a little fodder for everybody to chat about. Wait a second, is the goat getting back into the bar? Ooh. Run it! Let's say one day sweet there's fade. a situation, right? Cool tats. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said. You know, head into the playoffs. <laughs> Offense is great. Patriots. Somebody. Could be, somebody some Raiders look, could be. You never know. God forbid somebody goes down. Okay. Would you pick up that phone? I'm not opposed to it. If they would, I don't know if they're going to let me if I become an owner in the NFL team, but I don't know if, uh, I don't know. I'm always going to be in good shape, always be able to throw the ball. So to come in for a little bit, like MJ coming back, um, I don't know if they let me, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. Just say something happens to Brock Purdy, okay. which I don't love. Okay, yeah. I don't love that at all. Yeah, hopefully but not. that team's going to be good. That team's always going to be good. Yep. That team's always going to be in the hunt. Something happens to him late in the year. That's his hometown team. There's pictures of him yeah. with San Francisco 49ers gear. You're telling me there's a chance that Tom Brady would at least entertain a phone call from them saying, hey, you want to come back if you mm-hmm. need it, if you're in a good run? And then he said the Raiders maybe. You know, obviously the Raiders are a team that he's potentially going to yeah. own. But for some reason, the other owners are like, nah, we're not going to vote on that, pal. <laughs> Where a player? I don't think so. Push that. I don't think, Al Davis is a player. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care. Anyway, at what rate? No way. Mm-hmm. You're going to ruin the, mm-hmm. the valuation of the entire league. Not we can't be doing that. No way. But then he said to Patriots as well. Ooh. Oh. And I heard you perk up pretty mightily right there. Now, the way Vic blends, sick fade, great tats. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly how I remember the video from four hours ago, mm-hmm. whenever I watched it. He, uh, he says uh, all these names if they were in it still. Yeah. So that would mean, hey, Tom Brady has hopes that Coach Mayo is going to be able to have yeah. a team yeah. in it towards the end of this entire thing. And it feels like he respects and likes everybody that was back there, if you heard the way he talks. Yep. And I saw you go 6 to midnight right there. <laughs> this would mean that a quarterback that was playing very well to get them in contention would have to get hurt. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then he would come back. But all of a sudden, we're back on old Tommy. Tom Brady, maybe the Patriots quarterback. And what are your thoughts on him maybe playing for another team outside of New England yet again here? I mean, him playing for another team, I think, is more realistic. I was more so thinking, like, Brady coming in for the Patriots week 18 to win win the week 18 game to push the Patriots to four and 13 again. But oh. <laughs> again, th- this is a situation where it would be nice. The idea of Tom coming back to see him in a Patriots uniform again and get that moment of like, okay, this is actually the last time I'll see him in a Pats uniform because a lot of new England fans didn't get that. But I mean, the idea of him coming back, you can never rule that out. I mean, this wouldn't be the first time the Niners called him. They called him what last off season yeah, going crazy. into it. Like the, the idea that they wouldn't call him going into a playoff run. I mean, they would, definitely do that and then you even just think even broader like if just players that he hadn't played with like imagine if the Dolphins which he was connected to where they have a Tyreek Hill yeah. and Jalen Waddle and you know something happens with Tua and he goes down and they need to do something like that and, and even a team like the Cowboys where you know Dak Prescott goes through something and it's Jerry Jones and maybe Tom thinks to himself hey if I if I go play for Jerry, maybe Jerry will spread the word and let everyone know, like, hey, Tom's a good man. He can be an owner in this league because that's clearly what he's still looking for. But, no, he said it in there, and I, and I think it goes for a lot of quarterbacks. Like, Tom is going to be able to throw the football very well till he's 50. And I mean very well as in probably an NFL, hopefully. I mean, who, who knows? It would be fun to play We know another game. human that has told us I'll always be able to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Always. Never what are we even talking us. about? I assume most of those guys think that. Do you feel like when Bosa came up to you, he's like, how how you do it? <laughs> like I'm the number one overall pick, and like I get nervous, and you know, how how do you? <laughs> do you have you always been just stone cold killer? Legit in those massive games, you play your best football. Has this been your entire life? Do you think like you're just built differently? Do you look back in a moment like maybe when you were a kid playing like youth baseball where they're throwing way too much? Way too much. Pitchers are throwing way too many pitches at the young age. Jeff Passan wrote a book on it. He did. Okay, it's ruining elbows in the MLB. But anyway, is there any moment where you look back where you've always had like kind of this stone cold killer mentality? 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Growing up and stuff, there's been moments in Little League and high school where, you know, there were some some big plays that I made in moments. But I and obviously there's been plays that don't go my way. So it's, you know, do you get too high with it? Do you get too low with it? Um, it's a game. It's four quarters. And so for me, it's been about, you know, and it's a long season, too. So it's been about, dude, how can I continue to get better? How can I enjoy the little wins and learn from the losses? Um, but guys feed that. They feel it. Um, and obviously, like in that moment, Bosa, Bosa was just like, "Dude, what? Like, how the heck do you do it?" But, Are you an alien, uh, bro? <laughs> like, what's going on? Because I get nervous, mm -hmm. and um, he's a specimen. That's a jungle cat. Yeah, that dude's a dude, jungle cat. Dude, different. Day one, uh, I got here my rookie year, and everyone's like, "Bro, just wait, wait till you see Bosa come in and report." And I'm like, <laughs> "All right." He came walking in, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I've never seen someone that big. Never seen a human built like that. Yeah, like my first uh, day in the building, I saw Robert Mathis, shirtless, headphones in, jumping rope. And he, like, didn't break a skip for, like, 15 minutes straight. I'm like, what's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm in the same I'm in the same team as that guy. I don't know if that's necessarily the right moves in this all. Saved a reporter. A coyote was coming. During a John Deere shoot. A coyote started tracking down a local CBS reporter <laughs> and her dog in Brock Purdy. Yeah, here's the, here's the video right here. It, they sorry, it's a photo. They spell your name wrong on the right corner. Prudy's <laughs> Prudy's new gig. Don't love that. Don't love that. Back on his tractor, but this lady right here. I watched this video this morning. She said, "I, I just so happened. I just happened upon Brock Purdy and a couple offensive linemen and John Deere tractors in the middle of San Francisco." And then funny story. I was walking my dog away, and uh, I hear. Brock Brock Purdy yell, coyote! I turn around, biggest coyote I ever seen was stalking me and my dog or whatever. You saved a life, you saved a dog, you shot a John Deere tractor commercial in San Francisco, you're pick 262, leading a team to the Super Bowl in your second year. You're a magic man, Brock. Keep going, brother. We appreciate the hell out of you. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, I can't believe that that was a real thing, but uh, <laughs> yeah, she walked by and then sure enough, she said she's a news anchor and I was like, dude, I just saved a news anchor's life from getting eaten by a coyote, but <laughs> It's real, man. I can confirm it. Like, uh, Crystal, we don't know about? You got blood in her? Yeah, this was given to me as a gift. You put some cologne in this, and then when you, you know, when you don't have that set, you just unscrew the top, a little quick oh, nice. dab, bang, bang, and you're back in the mix, right? So, What's the cologne? What, What's the cologne? How do you get the cologne in there? Yeah. Well, I can't give you, I can't give you all the answers the to the test. Back. Baby like, funnel? Bro, Baby so funnel? I can't tell you what my cologne is. Come on. Yeah, do you inject the cologne from the bottom or from the top? That's a good question. It's from the top. So this screw, you want me to unscrew it? Mm -hmm. Look. Do it. A little dab. Yeah. But people put other stuff in there. This comes on. Wow. Kablam. Just like oh, that. Oh, it smells Bang. so good. Wow. And you're right back cool. in the mix. How good do you smell? Right? You smell good right now? You smell good? Yeah. Unbelievable. Really? I showered. I got, a, I got boxing in today. I worked out. I showered. I did it all today. And you smell magnificent right now. And you can't. Smell unbelievable. It's a mixture. It's not one cologne. It's Whoa. a mixture of a couple different <laughs> cologne. Hey, you've been in the cologne game a long time. I remember when people were trying to smell certain smells all the time. You oh, just yeah. walk past Abercrombie and yeah. Hollister and you yep. just get, what is yeah. that? Walk through any of the, the department stores. You got a whole entire cologne area. There was an era where everybody was wearing cologne. The Italians, I'll tell you what. There was a, Too much. There was a yeah. scene at that time. There was a time. That's still, you're a cologne guy forever? Well, listen, I, I'm not I'm not one of those guys that you can smell from three blocks away. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just I apply enough so that I got a little something going on and then, you know, that's it. But I make my own mix. I blend a couple different brands and that's my own thing. Nobody so, can steal your steal Yeah, your it's scent. your scent. Uh, oh, I like that. Because uh, they say they remember you, uh, your your best memory comes from smell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. bingo. Really? Yeah, so yeah. people are like... That's well, that's what I mean. Yeah. And girls yeah. will smell me. They'll be mm -hmm. like, hey, dude, what, what cologne is that? And I'm like, I'm not giving you the answer so you can go put it on your boyfriend. Yeah. Like, I mean, oh, jeez, Louise. So you want to be able to, first of all, you want to walk and play. I mean, there's only a few things old people can do. We play golf and we fish. Now you got some of these crazy idiots out here trying to play pickleball. <laughs> Great sport. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't call it pickleball. I call it. A place where old people go and get hurt. Okay. That's what they should change. That's what they should change the name to. I don't know if that's as uh, catchy. I don't know if that's as catchy as pickleball, Chuck. I don't know if it's. It's not sell. nearly as catchy, but hey, I'm telling you, getting getting uh, artificial parts, man. They they changed everything. Get it done as soon as possible. All right. So you are obviously freak athlete, big man. Happy to hear you. Hey, hey, Come forward. We appreciate you so much. Good luck tonight, man.
Hey, thank you, guys. Keep up the great work and be safe. Hey, okay, I have a question for you. Do you remember this man from a plane ride uh, from Phoenix to Atlanta. Atlanta? Atlanta. He said he was sitting next to you, and he said he liked what you were doing with your golf swing, and he said there's no way he remembers me. This was the guy that was playing with Tiger on Sunday at the Masters. Hey, you know what's so funny about that? I've been looking for that guy <laughs> for a long time. I'm not. Uh, this is a true story. Because I, I couldn't remember his name. This is actually a true story, Pat. Okay. He was so nice and kind. He came up and said some nice words to me. And I said, yo, man, that's really cool. Thank you. I love the game. I'm working my behind off. And I wanted to reach out to him later, but we, we, we never reconnected. But I remember the conversation vividly. I really do. He, because he, he says, I said, yo, man, that's a really nice compliment. I really do. I love the game. I play every day I get a chance. And he says, man, I'm, I keep working, blah, blah, blah. And I, and then that's the last time I talked to him. But, yes, I do remember him. So he that's the guy who played with Tiger this weekend, huh? That was pumped that you're here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope you feel that. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to whenever you decided you were going to come to the WNBA. Mm -hmm. You knew immediately then you were going to be a member of the Fever, right? Is that accurate? Yeah, it was, it was pretty pretty set in stone for okay. the most part. So were you pumped about that? How oh, yeah. much research did you do? And uh, ultimately, what led to that decision of going to the WNBA? Yeah, so when the, the draft lottery happened, I actually had a game on the same exact night, but I was I was hoping the Fever got the first pick. And obviously, I'm a Midwest girl. I'm from Iowa. Like, this is five hours from Iowa City, seven hours from Des Moines, where I grew up. Um, but I'm super pumped. Like, this is a basketball state. Like, people love it here. And obviously, Aaliyah Boston being on the team. Uh, she's one of my former teammates on uh, Team USA. Like, I think I've, I've just been stoked. And, like, people have been excited even before I got drafted about about this opportunity. So, now that I'm uh, actually yeah, here, he bought season I can't tickets. Yeah. Literally, yeah. Literally, he bought season tickets. Hey, we, we did as well. Let's yeah. Go. yeah, business booming. Uh -huh. Let's talk yeah. about, you, you talk about where you grew up over there in Iowa, mm -hmm. which is a massive piece of the, the story. He's from Iowa as well. So, he's incredibly proud that an Iowan representing Iowa. Let's give his, his hat a shout out. Yeah, he wears yeah, every right? day. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I look right, what's the front of A lot of Iowa gear here. Yes, sir. Coach Bluter Bob. right here. I have that in my apartment too, right on my desk where I do all my work. What, make its way to Indy? Has to. The Bluter Bobblehead? Can't leave that behind. Yeah, put it right there. It's like, good it. luck. It hit her head, you know? <laughs> <She's> like, <"Boop."> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, fun and um, enjoying every single second. So, um, yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is, like, how quick of a turnaround it is. It'll yeah. be a big adjustment. I think I'll be, like, moving here in, like, a week. So. Oh, welcome yeah. to the city. Yeah. 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 Already find a place. Yeah, I'll be, like, a weekly guest on here, I guess, if you want me to. Deal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all, right, all, right, uh, yeah, so, yeah. all right, that was going to be an off, uh, off show off, conversation. Off, yeah. You brought it up. That is binding. <laughs> that is binding. Uh, we have two balls. Not going to have you shoot. No. Nope, nope. Not going to have you shoot. But if I make this, if I make this, we'll give um, we'll give four season tickets away to the Indiana Fever. Okay. okay. Hey. Let's make it. Well, I yeah. Mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Kaylin. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Try we're doing. Yeah. Jeez. Kaylin, it's like. Oh, I thought you were going the far, far one. <laughs> you're going to the close one. Close I mean, one. He's <laughs> on a stage. <laughs> it's NBA 3, Kaylin. Uh, all right. Okay, just make Al it. Al Burton couldn't on. make it from up there. Yeah, yeah for the I record. Know, I saw that. Took him 25 that. times. Oh, you did see it. Yeah, I saw Yeah, that. not an easy shot. <laughs> I know, I know. He's I know. on Team USA. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> Finish his story. Oh, no. <gasps> that was close. Well, no, but it was real close. The other ball I thought we agreed on. Get it there. Oh, there so. it is. Yesterday was your birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday Coach. Coach. Happy birthday, Coach. Another yeah, we called the fire department to put out the candles. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them, obviously, a lot of them. You've done yeah. great in this entire thing. I've gotten a chance to chat with Coach now a few times over the last few weeks. Had a great dinner last Thursday night. I went to the bathroom four times. He didn't go to the bathroom once. Jeez. <laughs> do you remember that, Coach? You, do you, well, you, were, you were drinking more than I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was hammering some Jack and Dimes. I tried to get him an espresso martini. Found out he hates coffee. Okay. okay. Fair enough. No, no idea. Right? Is that real? Absolutely. Never had a cup of coffee in my life. <sighs> Legend. That's awesome. This is at the beginning of the dinner. First time meeting him face to face. Waiter comes in. Will you guys be having drinks? He goes, sure. Well, do you have any specialty drinks? I'm like, we'll take two espresso martinis. And I was about to give you the full speech about, <laughs> hey, you got to get past. Just wait. You got to get past the name. You got to get past the cup, the whole thing. And you go, absolutely not. I go, this is going to be a bad night. This gonna be, I thought this was going to win the evening. And then you told me, I don't drink coffee ever. Never. I don't do it. I'm like, you don't drink coffee? because tea and other things you do. Not a coffee guy. I think we all just assume because from the legendary tales that we've heard about the amount of film study mm -hmm. that you had to be just, you know, 
douche, douche, yeah. espresso, mm -hmm. espresso, coffee, complete opposite. That was a bad start, but I appreciate you taking time no. to kind of learn about me through this entire process and our show. Let's talk about the bird. Uh, Let's talk about it. <laughs> so that birds can safely watch a baseball game. At what moment did you realize that this is going to be talked about forever? And what is the first thing that goes through your mind as that bird kind of gets destroyed with a hundred miles an hour fastball? I think I think that was a spring training game down in Tucson in 2001, throwing the pitcher in a spring training game against the San Francisco Giants. I think it just kind of caught everybody. Um, it kind of caught everybody off guard. I'm like, what was that, that that just happened? I thought initially that maybe someone had thrown something, uh, and then the impact of the pitch uh, pushed the pushed the bird over to the on deck circle, and Jeff Kent, who was uh, on deck, picked it up. And I think at that time, everybody, uh, myself, all the players, uh, everybody in the stands, if you didn't realize what happened then. Uh, you did when he was holding up what was left of the bird. So uh, 23 years later, they're still talking about this. Like you said at the intro, 10 All-Star games, won 300 games, close to 5,000 strikeouts, MVP of a World Series. And? You know, and I'm recognized and remembered for killing a bird. <laughs> <laughs> With your bare hands. Yeah. With your bare Could you imagine if another yeah. bird was right behind it? We had two birds, one ball. Oh, oh man. my, it would be the ultimate, ultimate metaphor. Wow. About and, and the bird that got away would go home and say, sorry, uh, <laughs> Joe's not coming home tonight. Yeah. <laughs> There's another entity dying too, right in front of our eyes. Whoa. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Wendy, is the prevailing idea that the Warriors are going to blow everything up? I know like right after a lot of people said that, but then all the articles came out like, well, actually, maybe their championship window isn't closed. Maybe they run it, run it back and bring all these guys back, even though they were the 10 seed and they got embarrassed by the Kings. Um, but then a lot of people are also saying like, hey, Clay Thompson, he's going to make a shitload of money, whether that's in Miami or one of these other places that, you know, would be willing to pay him. Chris Paul came out recently and said like, hey, I'm not done yet. I got I got a lot of basketball left. What are the Warriors going to do moving into the future? Well, I don't think they want to break up these three guys. Um, obviously, Steph and Draymond are under contract, and Clay is going to take a pay cut. You don't have a choice. He he's made forty three million this year. Sheesh. I think there's I think there's a number that he can come in at with the Warriors where they can pay him a good figure and that they can achieve cost savings. The big question is, to me, can the Warriors improve this roster without spending $400 million? Because they spent $380 million this year, when including the luxury taxes. And that's a big number. Now, by the way, they were a better team this year than they were last year. And you may say, no way, they, they didn't make the playoffs this year. And last year, they made the second round. But I'm telling you, considering Draymond crushed them with that 20-game suspension across all those suspensions, they actually won more games the regular season this year. The West was just much better. And last year, they got a more favorable draw. This year, it was just harder. Um, the question is, are they going to still spend? Because their owner, Joe Lacob, came out on the record a couple of months ago and said, we want to get under the luxury tax. And to do that, they're probably going to have to cut Chris Paul. He's got a $31 million non-guaranteed contract for next year. They, let's say they get they cut Chris Paul, say thank you, Go on elsewhere, $31 million off the books. Let's say they get Clay to take a $20 million pay cut. They say they bring him down to 23 or even $20 million. He still averaged 18 points this year, shot 39% from three, led the league in free throw shooting. Like He's still an excellent player. That's $50 million in savings right there with those two moves. They don't do anything else. They're out of the tax, and things are better. But is their team better? Can they get better? So that's why the Chris Paul thing is a question. If they pick up Chris Paul's contract, and then they take, they've got a few draft picks left. Plus, they have these young guys. They got four young guys who they play who are really interesting. Brandon Pajemski, Trace Jackson Davis, which you might have heard of there in Indiana. Who, who, Moses, who, Moses who, Moody. Jonathan Kuminga, who is one of the better young players in the Western Conference. Great name. And they're willing to package all that together. They could go star hunting and add to the roster. Maybe they could put Andrew Wiggins in that deal. But it's going to be really hard if they do what Joe Lakeup has said, and that's reduce the payroll. By the way, if they bring that team back to next year, this team went 27-12 and 12 down the stretch. Those young players get a little bit better. 
Draymond doesn't get suspended three different times, maybe they're the four or five seed. Is there, does that mean they're a championship window? I don't know about that. They're not what they were six, seven years ago. But this is not a team that you're taking the TNT to and saying they'll blow it to a thousand people. So, you know, in Indy, like, have you been doing anything in Indianapolis, or you're just like, hey, this is a stopgap, baby. I don't need to go <laughs> around. I can go to the zoo if I want, or you just kind of, like you've said, you kind of locked in, staying in the at the house or condo or whatever you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I try to sleep as much as I can. Um, I I did not know that they had a zoo until you just said that. So. Gee, <laughs> it's right next uh, to right the stadium. stadium. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. no, Paul, sorry, it's, sorry, it's sorry, right guys. next Paul. to Paul. You can see it from the mound without tall you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you just accidentally look over, I think your guys is. I only said zoo because it's up. next to the stadium. You could see, you could probably see a chimpanzee doing yeah, its thing yeah. in the sky over there. Look for one night. They'll be up in this, literally right next to your. It's sweet. I like how dialed in you are, though. No, I mean, Incredible. yeah, no, I'll look for it. I'll look for it tonight. All right, but. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. No, I don't. Yeah, no, I, I haven't done a whole lot here. Um, trying, gonna try to go to a Pacers game at some point. There but, you go. Um, yeah, I like Indy. I will say that. I, <laughs> I, I really do. What is your mindset when you're up there? And uh, how come you're able to throw the ball faster than everybody else on earth, you think? Uh, yeah, I don't know about <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that one. Um, you do? Yeah. No, I – yeah. I don't know how I do it. Um, Have you always just been a rocket, even as a kid? No, not, not really. I mean, When it, did it develop? Last couple of years, really. I mean, just growing into my body and getting stronger and that kind of thing. I think that was that was the biggest thing. But I was like – when I was a junior in high school, I was probably, th- probably throwing 86 miles an hour. Jeez. Wow. So it, it, it's happened recently. So you go to LSU, uh, you go to Air Force, you go to LSU, you develop, you get stronger, and then we watch that run where you guys mm-hmm. go in the national sure. championship and your mustache and you are just, like, awesome. And then we see the Pirates draft you mm-hmm. immediately. Is there a hesitation or a worry that when you go to the next level, you're not going to be able to do the same stuff? Or if you're throwing 100, you're throwing 100? It, it, it's different. Um, and so that that's something that I'm, I'm learning right now about, you know, just being in – Obviously, AAA is different than the big leagues, but AAA is also different than college. So um, just trying to figure that out a little bit. What is it, the batters or the ball, or what is it? Honestly, all of it. And, like, uh, you know, the people talk about the five- and six-day rotations. Like, every everything is just a little bit different. Um, it's nice that they're using wood bats, but, like, the hitters are better. The balls are, are you know, smoother, and, and, like, the seams are smaller, so it's kind of hard to throw. But mm. So just a bunch of like little adjustments that you kind of got got to get to. Seems like you've been okay. Yeah. We've been watching. Yeah, the, yeah, we've been watching the, these stats are popping up on the internet like seemingly every single time you step in. Here's the most hundred mile now uh, hundred mile an hour pitches thrown this year uh, by you're the guy by I don't know. Seems like only be 57 more than second, uh, which is okay. Yeah, not bad. bad. I guess that's not bad. I guess that's pretty good with a sweet stash. Oh, yeah. it's strong. Pittsburgh, by the way, the perfect place to go with what you have on mm-hmm. your upper lip. Just would like to let you know that. Low on the fact that you're just throwing absolute heat. Now, uh, before Tone Diggs, who's a big Pittsburgh Pirates fan, and Ty Schmidt, who's a massive baseball fan, have questions because we assume you're going to go on to do amazing things and we're going to be able to run this back like 10 yep. years from now and be super pumped about it. So yeah. we appreciate mm-hmm. you doing this. 